Oh my days. AMD, once again, you have absolutely smashed it. And if you can't already tell, I'm incredibly excited. Seriously, I did not expect this level of a jump from a CPU and PC gaming in 2022 is suddenly looking a whole lot brighter. For context, AMD has not only produced faster processors here, but ones that are smaller, more power efficient, and arguably more future-proof than Intel. But does this announcement actually mean that you should start saving your pennies, grab your current gaming system, and chuck it in a skip? Well, of course the answer to that is no. So let me explain everything you need to know about these upcoming chips, what they're going to mean for you, and ultimately whether you should be buying them. Right after a short word from this video's sponsor. AlphaSync is the place to get the pre-built system of your dreams. Without any knowledge on how to build a PC, AlphaSync gets you top branded components at all budgets, lovingly put together right here in the UK. Either choose a master crafted AlphaSync specification or design yours from scratch. The choice is entirely up to you. Get your game on today with that link down below. Let's begin then, and what exactly has been announced? Well, the entire stack of the latest AMD Ryzen processors no less, all the way from the entry level Ryzen 5 7600X up to the mighty Ryzen 9 7950X. As say entry level, the Ryzen 5 is hardly cheap, but of course there will be lower priced processors coming a little bit later at the end of this year, or maybe into next. On first glance, the specs don't actually look too different to last time, as the core and thread counts do remain the same at their respective positions. But if you nose in a little bit closer, you'll start to see some huge changes. I mean, just look at those clock speeds. The base and boost clocks see a ginormous jump this time. Not that far off 1 GHz of improvement across the board, with the top end 7950X hitting 5.7 GHz on the boost. Now that is insane. Even without any other improvement, this would see some big, big gains, so it's fantastic to see this straight off of the bat. But here's the thing, the core architecture itself has actually changed, as we're now on Zen 4, and this brings improvements to what we call Instructions Per Clock Cycle, or IPC for short. With a cited 13% average improvement to the IPC, the end result is a double whammy, and a CPU that is just insanely fast. In fact, the first benchmarks are off of the charts! Well, actually I suppose they're not off the charts, because they are quite literally on the charts, but don't worry about that. The flagship 7950X, 29% faster single core performance, for 35% more performance in Shadow of the Tomb Raider versus the last generation, and 48% higher scores than Cinebench. Turn this towards Team Blue, and you'll see a 14% uplift in Shadow of the Tomb Raider versus the 12900K, but it will do so with 47% better performance per watt. For me though, the party really gets started when you turn towards some of the more normal, cheaper, more gaming orientated CPUs. As here, even the entry level 7600X manages to beat Intel's top end 12900K with higher single core Geekbench scores and 11% more performance than F1 2022. That is crazy. Pricing for each chip essentially stays the same as the previous generation, except for the lower priced Ryzen 7950X and arguably the new Ryzen 7 II. After inflation, all of them are actually a little bit less than before, though $299 is still pretty high for a 6 core processor if you ask me. Okay, I hear you cry, these new chips are gonna be pretty insane, but there's gotta be a catch, right? There always is. What is it this time? Well, there are some, kind of. Obviously, you don't get something for nothing, and having a look at the power requirements, or the TDP of these chips, and both the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 9s have actually increased versus the previous generation by around about 50 to 60 watts. But to be honest, while a 170 watt TDP does sound pretty hefty for a Ryzen 9 CPU, let's not forget that the i9 Intel chips can use way more than that, so we're going to have to test them all individually to see the real world usage. Other than power usage, I think there's only real one red flag that you do need to be aware of, and that's all around upgradability. Because with Ryzen 7000, we see an entirely new platform, AM5, and this means that you're going to have to buy a whole new motherboard and processor in order to upgrade to one of these chips. We can't be mad, as AM4 has been around for years, and with DDR5 memory, PCIe Generation 5, and even faster interfaces rocking about, it's about time that we saw some new features. AMD is at least keen to stress that this AM5 platform will be supported until at least 2025, so if you do decide to buy a new motherboard this year, you know it's going to last. But AMD has also kicked a bit of an own goal with their motherboard lineup this time around. It's just weird. E, what is this all about? You have a choice of X670 or X670E, and then B650 or, yep, you guessed it, B650E. 
My understanding is that the E stands for extreme and it enables PCIe generation 5 on the graphics slot, but then what is really the point in X670? What's it for? Loads of Gen 5 SSDs, but not a Gen 5 GPU? I don't really get it. And how is a lower priced B650E motherboard more extreme than an X670 motherboard? It's just a bit bizarre. But regardless, the chips and motherboards will release at the end of October, slightly later for B650 by one month, so please make sure that you do get yourself subscribed so you see all of the builds, all the testing, reviews, as well as of course the upcoming 4080 launch and all of the other stuff from AMD. There is a lot of exciting stuff coming up, but on the topic of Ryzen CPUs, please remember one thing. Most people don't actually need to upgrade to them at all. But, but you just hyped it up, Marcus. What are you doing? What are you doing? Saving you some money. Kind of. Whenever a new hype train arrives, it is always worth remembering that PC gaming is about gaming FPS. Nothing more, nothing less. And while these new CPUs may well have better performance than before, all of these tests were done with crazy expensive graphics cards at 1080p. Most games don't need a better processor. Don't get me wrong, Ryzen 7000 is going to be great for anyone on an older system or anyone that wants to go for balls to the wall, top end performance. But for anyone else, the GPU is almost certainly the king of your FPS. And if you're not doing a full system upgrade, please spend your money on a better graphics card instead. You always need to find out, are you CPU limited or are you GPU limited? And then just upgrade that component. Don't buy into the hype train. Remember that you're being sold to not only from the companies, but influencers. Technically, that's me. I'll see myself out. It really is incredibly simple. If you do need a new CPU, as you can tell, I am so excited at these new Ryzen chips and I think AMD is smashing it and I cannot wait to see what Intel counters with because I think both of them are going to be brilliant options and the performance of these new chips is insane. But I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on the new Ryzen CPUs. Are you going to be grabbing a 7000 chip or is what you've got absolutely fine? Are you going to be saving your money for something else? Where's it going? Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to absolutely smash that like button and of course get subscribed for all of the upcoming videos. And as always, if you do want to check out current pricing on anything in my setup or the Ryzen CPUs once they launch, you can find all of that listed down below. And while you're down there, be sure to check out AlphaSync. AlphaSync brings you a worry-free PC gaming experience with a huge range of custom-built gaming PCs. With a 4.8 rating on Trustpilot and free next-day delivery available on selected builds, why not let AlphaSync take all of the stress out of PC gaming? Get started today with the link down below. But thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one.